I woke up to a delicate tongue slapping. What? What? I said, pushing my hellhound away from my face. I don't need a tongue bath. What is it? You were sleeping. Yes, I was. Now I'm awake. What's with the tongue lashing? You were making noise. Noise? What noise? I don't make noises in my sleep. Did you eat some bad meat? The noise sounded like you hurt your stomach. I didn't eat bad meat, and my stomach is fine. I'm fine. I know. I licked you. Now you will be better. Stop eating bad meat. He padded off and left me alone. I laid my head back on my pillow and realized how surreal my life had become. For once, there were no angry gods or world-ending cataclysms on the schedule. I had a moment to actually bask in doing nothing. I never anticipated being cursed alive by Kali, bonding to a hellhound, and working cases with a grouchy mage. I couldn't even begin to explain my complicated relationship with an ancient vampire. Despite my several near-death moments, I wouldn't trade it in for a normal life. It was clear my brain was still tired. I had the perfect solution. Death wish with a splash of Java Ambrosia would right all wrongs this morning. I jumped out of bed and nearly face-planted as I crashed into the immobile object known as Peaches. He had the bad habit of materializing in the oddest places and at the strangest times. What did I tell you about doing that? I said, catching my balance before introducing my face to the floor. Walk around the house. Walk, not blink in between and give me a heart attack. You said to stay out of the bathroom when you make it smell bad. This is your sleeping room. Yes, don't blink around my bedroom either. Not before I've had coffee. This room smells too. You realize it smells mostly of overfed hellhound, right? Is this where you keep the bad meat? What are you talking about? He sniffed the air around the bed and chuffed. Are you still sick? I can lick you again. Now I was getting concerned. It was one thing for him to accuse me of making noises when I slept, which, for the record, I didn't. It was something else entirely when he started smelling things as off. Where does it smell? The room or me? He stepped close, sniffed me, and shook his head, slobbering my face. You smell different. Did you eat more bad meat? I wiped the slobber from my face. I didn't eat bad meat. Let's go ask Monty. I'm hungry. Can you fill my bowl? You just ate last night. Maybe you should give your bottomless pit of a stomach a break. I hear fasting is good for you. Fasting? Is that when I eat meat and you tell me to slow down? No. Fasting is when you don't eat for a period of time to let your stomach rest. It's a curse, then? What? No. Fasting is good for you. Eating is good for me. My stomach doesn't need rest. It's not tired. I've noticed. Where's Monty? The angry man is in the room with the big table. The room with the big table was our conference room. I got dressed, washed my face of Peach's magical slobber, and headed to the kitchen. A kettle was whistling on the stove as Monty came in, holding a book. Peaches says I smell, I said, pouring my death wish extreme. What do you think that means? Perhaps it's time for a shower, Monty said, glancing down at my hellhound. Animals have a keen sense for these sorts of things. Morning English humor, I said. My day can't get off to a better start. I'm serious. He says I smell different. Different how? Monty now asked, concerned. Can he clarify? 